How's it going there everyone? It's Mr. Zan over here bringing us a brand new Bungle Stray Dogs anime discussion. And for today's anime guys, we are going to be talking about Bungle Stray Dogs episode 20. And in this episode folks, this episode was more of Atsushi's character development progressing very well throughout the whole entire episode guys as Atsushi himself was the main star. Granted though from the previous all the other episodes that we've been actually seeing with Atsushi, it seems that he was always being diminished by the other characters themselves due to the fact that you know the author himself inside Bungle Stray Dogs he wants to give other characters a chance to actually shine but it's been a long time since we actually have seen Atsushi gain some character development in this episode but granted though in this episode lots of props to Atsushi's character development because I love the way his character was progressing he actually took more of a leadership role in the whole entire episode itself folks but granted though let's not dwell deep too much into Atsushi right now but Instead, let's talk about how it led up to the events of Atsushi becoming, taking that leadership role. So, in the beginning of the episode, guys, we see Kyoka and Atsushi still facing off against F. Scott Fitzgerald. As you can see that Fitzgerald was actually taking control of the situation. But it seems that once Kyoka came in, she kind of took him by surprise. And you literally see Scott Fitzgerald actually surprised at the fact that the poor mafia actually has young children that are very, like, like how we say like barbarians in a sort of manner these murderers and you're here thinking like it's true most of the american authors from the guild are actually more of an older type of age group you kind of say granted though the port mafia does have a lot of more younger members which is kind of ironic though hmm makes a lot makes, makes you kind of think as to like why are, the, are basically the port mafia has a lot of children in there and it makes sense why they're kind of more on the murderous kind of side instead of the business side but that's besides the point that's besides the point. The point is, the whole entire episode, like I said, you see Kyoka versus Atsushi. Uh, Kyoka was actually going to be able to rescue freaking Atsushi. But we get a brand new character that's involved in this whole entire episode that actually took a major role as well. And that was Mark Twain, guys. Another American author for the guild members themselves. And granted though, his power seems to be based on, you could say he's kind of like the, like the marksmanship of the guild members themselves but based on his ability he can actually you could kind of say it mark twain's ability huckleberry finn and tom sawyer they kind of help him reach his target so let's say he shoots a gun and that's it mark uh, huckleberry finn or mark or what's called uh, tom sawyer would actually ride the bullet itself and head directly towards its actual victim granted though it's kind of like it kind of reminds you of shaman king when one of the characters had a, I, I believe it was like a, a dowser and it embedded one of its spirits inside one of the dowsing machines and basically it would it would be able to make the dowsing machine travel wherever it wants. It's kind of like the same similar type of manner except instead of the dowsing machine it, it's actually a bullet in this case. But granted though, like I said, Mark Twain himself wasn't that involved in himself. Like I said, he was just basically just more of an artillery man in the episode. But then later on we see that it was thanks to Mark Twain's interference with Kyoka versus uh, Fitzgerald. You literally see that right there and then Fitzgerald took control of the situation again. And also Fitzgerald seems to be actually laughing at the matter because the you could say the government agency or the police force is actually looking at Kyoka as a murderer. And that's what kind of diminished her character as well in the episode due to that reason because she's being seen as an enemy instead of a friend for the police force. So granted she has too many enemies around which kind of set her up for failure in the episode. And that's why Atsushi was able to be captured by Fitzgerald in the first act of the episode. Granted though, we actually did get to look at Melvin Sh uh, Herman. And by God, guys, that was an actually interesting look at to see Moby Dick's power right there. Moby Dick apparently in the freaking series seems to be more of a giant spaceship than a giant whale. Which kind of makes sense too because a lot of people that kind of think of Moby Dick, they would just think of a whale and like a sea lugger. But no, it's actually a spaceship in itself. And you literally see Skit Fitzgerald actually use Moby Dick as his home base of operations. But granted, that's because, remember, the Port Mafia destroyed the yacht that they actually had all their supplies. So they, I feel like they're using Moby Dick as like their last resort to a home base. Or at least that's what I'm personally thinking because that's the way it kind of just kind of it's been emphasized in the episode. But later on in the episode, we like I said, Atsushi's been captured. He starts noticing that he actually confronted Fitzgerald again in this episode. And he actually has a little conversation with Fitzgerald. And Fitzgerald, again, seems to be actually, like I said, 
there's a purpose as to what he's doing in this episode. And Fitzgerald said, there's a specific book that's out there that he wants to get. And he needs Atsushi's help in order to get it. Or he's another major role involving in getting this specific book. Now, personally, I don't know what book he's actually talking about. Now, that's actually very interesting because now we're actually getting a major, you could say a major plot to actually advance the actual story in it in itself. Now granted though, I'm wondering what kind of book it is. Because it says it's the only copy in the whole entire planet, you could kind of say. So it kind of makes you wonder like, is this like a, a book on laws? A book on, on history? You know, we don't know what's, as to what certainty and what kind of book this book actually holds information on it. Or a book on, on politicians. Like I said, it, it could be a very powerful book. But instead, it's not really necessarily the book, but the, the, the information that carries in it, guys. And like I said, I think Fitzgerald also said that, that people try to destroy this book and they really couldn't destroy it. So it kind of begs to see if it's actually another supernatural book too. That would be pretty interesting too to see if it went along that route. But granted though, that was that part of the little scene that was actually very important. But it kind of led up to a, the climax of the story, guys, right there. is still more information being bombarded in that particular scene, guys. And that is because Q was being captured by the freaking guild members themselves. And the guild members, guys, woo! Man, they are not messing around. They took to an emergency strategy plan in order to advance their troops, in order to be combating the guild and the detective agency. And that's hilarious because you literally see Fitzgerald, he is not playing around anymore. And by that, I mean he captures Q. And I mean he literally captures Q. Holy snap. Q was literally being tormented. But it's hilarious because Q kind of took that as an advantage and said, Oh, you know, you've captured me. And, he, and she wanted to play with H.P. Lovecraft in, in this actual episode. And we literally see H.P. Lovecraft's actual Cthulhu give a little shadowy uh, figure around Q itself. And Q was actually diminished again as a character. Like, holy snap. Remember, in the previous episode, we saw Q as a very powerful person with the ability to mind control. But they, the freaking guild members themselves actually turned that around and used that instead to actually cause mind control throughout the whole entire city, folks. Throughout the whole entire city. And now the whole city was under their Beckham. I swear, folks, this episode was juicy due to that extreme, the way that it really progressed quickly in the episode itself. Like I said, Fitzgerald is really taking control of the situation, but we don't know what Oiga right now is kind of doing because, remember, he's still fighting beneath the shadows. Remember, the Port Mafia themselves were trying to save the city from the mind control of Q, which kind of backfired on them. So it's kind of hurting them at the sense why they use Q. And my God, guys, my freaking God, ah, John Steinbeck literally... His power is so fearsome due to the fact that he was actually able to subjugate freaking Q in, in the little cell. And right there and then, I love the little conversation they actually had in that scene part of your scene because it kind of, you literally see John Simon said, you know, God is not here to help you. And I'm and right there and then, when these two are talking, you literally see Q just like, go out on the ranch and say, you know, she's going to curse everybody for the whole world for, for having this certain power. And we Like I said, Q herself does not even like this power. It just sees that she's just using it just to get back at the world for lashing out at her. Like I said, it's very interesting to see how Q's character development actually changed throughout one whole entire episode. Like, holy snap, like her character development was just like that. Like I said, I'm, wonder I'm loving how they're actually going through this actual episode. But granted though, at the end of the episode, we see Atsushi escape from Fitzgerald himself due to the fact that Lucy was actually on the ship and helped her escape because she sees that Atsushi is actually helping her give the light in her life. And we see that that kind of does make sense. You know, Lucy seems to be in trouble when she was young. And that's, like I said, Atsushi, he has, his way his word. he has his way with words. He really does. I got to give credit to Atsushi. But granted, this is the part where I'm telling you guys that Atsushi's character really starts developing more and more in this episode due to the fact that once he escapes from Fitzgerald's freaking Moby, Moby Dick spaceship, like holy snap, you literally see Atsushi starts noticing this, this city and itself develop under Q's brainwash control. And from there... You see that the Port Mafia is trying to defend, defend the city by Q's actual powers. From right there and then, guys, you literally see Atsushi still, you know, he's trying to escape, etc., etc. You know, we get a little bit of action going on. And right there and then, guys, we actually then see that that he was trying to get the, the cursed doll that was right there. That he stole, that, that Fistral had in the possession. He bring, he finally brings it to Daisai, and Daisai himself comes out in the episode. And right there and then, we are actually excited to see Daisai actually finally unlock the curse throughout everybody that, that was in there. Granted though, because Fitzgerald still has Q, they could still keep doing 
the curse over and over and over again. So Daizai, you know, releasing the curse for that specific moment, it still does not affect the overall outcome. Because remember, Fitzgerald still has the city under its control. But like I said, at the end of the episode, we then get to see freaking Atsushi finally say some actual smart words instead of just saying, let me just go fight these guys for no apparent reason. No, and he actually says, we have to join with the Port Mafia in order to take down our opponent. I'm loving that actual fact due to that reason because it makes sense, you know, like, you know, they, these guys should have actually banded together in order to fight against the guild members. Because, you know, the guild members, they seem far superior in military st strategy now. You know, Port Mafia is, is strong as well in military strategy too, but just because they're, they, it seems to me that they're weak in numbers. That's, that's the thing. The guild members themselves have strong freaking members themselves but they have numbers that's the thing they have numbers and like i said the detective agency and pro mafia coming together to actually save the day is actually an interesting route to go even in the anime open they kind of explained that too that you literally see octagawa and atsushi both actually trying to punch fitzgerald in the face and granted that actually makes makes the foreshadowing elements come in into light into this episode guys like i said the episode was delicious in itself as to what's been going on and I'm loving the fact that they actually used, at the end of the episode, a line out of Atsushi's, actual one of his own books. That was very interesting because it, it's, it's kind of like a like a, a pun on itself, saying that Atsushi is learning from his own self. Now that was pretty interesting. But that's it for today's episode, folks. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I did. Because this episode, like I said, there was a lot of character left for Atsushi himself and Q herself too. Q st is still going on the rampage. She's still a little bit of a lunatic, but... It goes to show that other people are still able to take down Q herself. But let me know down in the comments, guys. What are you guys' thoughts on the episode itself? What did you guys think about Q actually losing her head in, uh, with John Steinbeck himself? Like I said, that actually scene was actually a very powerful scene. But let me know down in the comments below what you guys thought about the episode. And as always, guys, if you guys enjoyed my content, give a like, comment, share, and subscribe for more Bungo Stray Dogs anime discussions. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. But this is Mr. Zen, signing out.